This conference will now be recorded. Hey, Sammy, it's Stephanie Paris sending you a little video on how we can do your budget. So excited. It's one of my favorite things. And honestly, most businesses don't utilize it, which is quite annoying. It, it really, I, I don't understand why they don't utilize budgets. Um, how do you know where you're going without a plan? So anyways, love that you're doing the QBO. Wanted to make sure I gave you the resources to get you through there. Do remember, if you have questions, don't hesitate, shoot me a message. I definitely wanna be sure to help. And like I said, it's great research for my course that I'll be launching in just a couple of months too. Um, so your QuickBooks should look like this. You know, this is a sample company that we use for training. Um, obviously, I don't know who Craig's design is, but if you go up into that gear icon on the top right, you're going to see this crazy menu. But if you just go down under tools and go to budgeting, what's going to happen is, um, it's, if it's your first one especially, it's going to ask if you want to add a budget. As we do more, you'll see your prior budgets in there. So it's going to keep a historical account of all of your budgets which is really nice if you're trying to take last year and increase it by 10% or whatever the case may be. So if we just add a budget, we're gonna name it um, for Sammy. So, and you tell it what year. Um, it does let you project out for quite a, a far span. Right now, QuickBooks, the downside is it only budgets the P&L. So it only budgets your income and expense. It doesn't do anything on the balance sheet yet. I'm actually campaigning and um, look to be a part of the Intuit Council in the next few months in which that's one of the things I've proposed to them and I've been trying to work with them uh, in my consulting with them is to add that feature because I think it's helpful for business owners to see, you know, if we stay on budget, how's this going to impact my cash, my AR, things like that. Um, you can do your budget as a whole. You can do it um, annually, um, quarterly or monthly. I definitely monthly is what I always recommend. You do have the option to pre-fill data. You can either make it completely from scratch or you can use the data from the prior year and to see where you, you were trending and then, um, and then allocate it based on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the actual so you can see it auto-populate. You can subdivide it. If you have, if you're project costing in your QuickBooks and say you have like seven projects, you can split it out by project, which is so nice for people who are using that job costing feature. Not sure if you are or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it not to subdivide it. But if you are, it just takes it that much further. So then you can have, you know, my project X is for a customer, X is, you know, here's the PL for that. So, so you do have that option right there. When I clicked the actual, you see that it auto-populated these fields for me. Um, one thing that you'll do is you can click on any line that has an income um, that we'll be able to use. So whenever we, I'm going to hit create, but then whenever we get in there, we'll be able to adjust anything we want in any of these lines, like this billable expense or design income. Once we create it, now we have, you know, we've given it the meat of what we want. So now we can change it. For, I'm going to just put, um, we're going to tell them we're going to do 5,000 a month. This blue arrow right here allows you to put it all the way across. So um, it just does the work for you um, to make it easier. So if if you have, you know, month over month, say rent, you, you enter it once and it, it'll, you hit that blue arrow and it's going to take it all the way across for you to kind of save you time and be more efficient. If you want to clear the row, you'll hit this X you, and it takes it all back out. So it's going to do it. Like I said, it's going to do populate everything. You'll see in our test sample, we had stuff in November and December, but you'll be able to go through any of these lines you want. Um, and, and this will, these accounts, I should say, are all, they're all driven off of your chart of accounts. This just happens to be their chart of accounts. Um, if there's a line that you don't have anything for, just leave it, leave it blank and it'll just, um, you can take it completely out, but I just leave it blank so that I can see it, um, in my reports as I go. Um, you can save it as you go, or you can save and close. Um, I, let's go ahead and save and close it so you can see where, 
where they house at. So now, um, if you had seven different budgets, there would be seven different ones here. And so you'll, it's the one we created. It's all of our work through today. If I wanna edit it, I'll edit it. But here's the great thing. If I wanna run a report to see that budget, I can just go right in and see, here's my overview of where it, what it's gonna look like if I have all of these things in here. That, um, I don't know if you use this back to report list a lot, but I use it all the time. Um, you, now that we have our budget in there, when we go down to our business overview in our report section, you can see budget versus actuals, which is lovely. Because now what it's going to do is it's going to tell you, um, you know, here's what our actual numbers were, here's where we budgeted, here's what we're over, and the percentage of what we're over. You can tweak that. If you drop this compare other period down, you can decide, you know, do I need to see how much over I am, how much is remaining? You do have that flexibility there. Um, which is, it is kind of helpful. I'm going to go ahead and take this percentage of budget out so that it's a little more condensed for us. Um, and we'll just always rerun that report so that it updates for you. You can change, um, I don't know how much you know on this, or so if it's extra, just ignore me. But um, you can customize any of this too. So, so it'll set up the way that you want it to in this review. But the, the nice part is now when I go to PDF it, you're going to see, I mean, you get to see your real life activity on where you're at versus where you were or, you know, or where you projected to be. And that's just, it's so helpful when you're planning, especially from a sales perspective. Now say that we want to go into our report, our budget and change it. We're going to go right back to budgeting and it's right here. So we have options. I'm gonna, let's say I'm gonna change my revenue. So I'm gonna make a copy of that budget and name it whatever. Um, let's see. And I'm just gonna, so I just copied that one exactly and I'm just gonna create again. And you can, you know, maybe we do a 20% increase or whatever. So now if you can make any changes you want, I'm going to put that $5,000 in revenue that we talked about. And I'm going to save and close it. So now you have two of them out there. Um, and, and it's just so nice to be able to get right back to it. And like I said, you can, from this screen, you can do a budget versus actuals if you want, just from the screen, um, if you want to see, okay, where were we for budget one? Where were we for budget two? that's going to allow you to do that separately and be able to, to really see that. Um, I think that honestly, budgets, like I said, they're so much fun. I absolutely love them, but that's really, I mean, that's just about it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of knowing where to find it. If you have any other questions, please, please, please let me know. I would love to help you. I am going to give you one last tip. Um, one of the things that I tell all of my clients, if you don't currently back up your QuickBooks online, you should. Kronos has a platform where it's like 10 bucks a month. Um, you know, there's several different options out there. But, and I tell you this because I've had a client just about this time last year that their CPA for tax purposes had their file open and he accidentally overwrote their file with somebody else's. So there was a year's worth of data and transactions that were completely overridden by somebody else's file. QuickBooks is not supposed to allow that to happen. They're supposed to be a fail safe, but it has in the past not, not limited it. So just so you know, I mean, I, I just share that with everybody because it's a very minimal expense, but it's definitely worth having it because QuickBooks backs up their servers every night, their online servers, but they do not back up individual clients. So it's just a little food for thought for you. Um, and then lastly, the, the bit I'll tell you is if you're not currently under a pro advisor for your subscription, switch to one. It'll save you a little bit of money month over month, how it'll pay for your, um, your backup and then some. So it's, 
it's it's kind of silly the way that it works, but and you can still be in charge of all of your billing and stuff, and but just go under a pro advisor, have them added to their portal. Um, I do that for a lot of clients just because why pay more when you don't have to? You know, they don't have to hire me for anything, but they're welcome to go underneath my umbrella and they still maintain all the billing for their QuickBooks, but that way they're getting a discounted rate, um, the rate I get for because I, you know, attend every seminar and all of that craziness. But it does make sense um, just to, to pass on those savings. So like I said, if you're not under one, if you don't have one already, holler, I'll let you know. Um, that there may be one in your area you want to reach out to. You know, like I said, you're welcome to jump on my platform too. I just want to make sure that I share those savings with people as well. So, you know, small business, that's where it's at. So if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.